What's up, Sentinel viewers? It's your girl, Princess, and we are here with actor James Lachur to talk about his show, Men at Work, and his life in general. Born in and raised in L.A., right, if I'm not correct? How about yourself? Same thing. Oh, yeah, where'd you go to high school? I went to Westchester High. Where'd you go? Okay, I went to Narbonne High. Uh, okay. Gauchos represent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very nice. Very nice. A local success story. <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. I'm working on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big time actor, man. How did that happen? Because I know I've done a little research on you. That's not, well, it wasn't your immediate goal, your first trajectory. Right. No, uh, immediately, uh, right after high school, uh, you know, I was kind of at a loss as to what to do. So I went and joined the, the military for uh, a year. I had that experience, and it turned out that I, I, I liked that very little. So I thought, uh, well, what would I want to do with my life? And um, uh, acting kept coming back to my mind and so I, I just you know chose it that year and I, after that I went to El Camino College for a year to you know get some drama classes there and uh, I, I took to it pretty well and so I just started pursuing it so I ended up getting a theater degree at uh, USC and I, I've been pursuing it ever since. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. a great story. I love it. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, it's my story. <laughs> so who kind of inspires you as an actor? Uh, you know, people doing soulful work, uh, you know, truthful work. So that can be anybody from, you know, these little actors that are six to seven years age, uh, six to seven years of age, or, you know, actors that are 78 years of age. It's like people that are just sort of uh, giving it up and uh, getting after it. Uh, I appreciate it. I know growing up, some of my favorite actors were Gregory Hines, uh, Tom Hanks, um, uh, John Malkovich was a big uh, inspiration for a minute. Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who was John Turturro. So, you know, I got a few favorites out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Tell Richard me. Pryor, let me give him a shout out. Richard Pryor is my man. Him and Gene Wilder. Yeah, one of the greats. Couple yeah. Of the great. um, tell us about Men at Work. Funny show. I got yeah? a chance to see it. Funny show. Oh yeah, you yeah, like it? I like it. Good. Because like we like it, when, especially you pretty young ladies like it. Because we, uh, <laughs> I know it's called Men at Work, but I like to think it's for men and women, you know, to have a laugh at. So. I appreciate you watching, and, I, and uh, we hope to entertain you. Yes, you definitely do. Gibbs' character, he's a, you know, kind of like a ladies' man. Is he? You know? Yeah, he is. I don't know if he's a lady. I know he appreciates the ladies. <laughs> I don't know if he's a ladies' man. Uh, he's more, I see him more as kind of a, an adventurer. Gibbs is uh, uh, open to doing many things in life. He's kind of curious about life. He has a zest for life, and uh, I, I like that about his character. Yeah. Well, yeah. what about you? Do you resonate with that at all? Do you are you a ladies' man, or do you appreciate the ladies? I can appreciate. I, I like good women. You know, uh, you know, there's some bums out there that I like to keep my distance from. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I can appreciate a good woman. Um, I don't know. For me, I'm, I'm a bit more reserved than uh, Gibbs is. I think I'm a bit more cautious. Where his, he's a, a bit more fearless than I am. Hey, Kelly, this is all great, but I kind of thought tonight would just be you and me. Relax. I just wanted you to meet my friends first. But the more fun we have now, the more I'm gonna want to... later. Hey, guys. Bam! Okay. okay, well, are you dating anybody right now? Well, now you're getting a hard-hitting question. This is, this is super personal. Uh, yeah, this is the Sentinel. No, I'm, you know, and I'm going to refuse to uh, answer that because I like to keep my personal life kind of personal, okay. you know, in private. Okay. So I'm going to refuse to reserve that right. That. Although I've yet to be married. I will say that. Okay. Yeah, or yeah. start a family. Nice. But is that something that you want to know? Uh, yeah, so I, I got this thing with strip clubs. I got to get out of them because I know that's that's preventing me. They tell me, at least my family <laughs> tells me, that's keeping me from starting and, and maturing. So... Uh, no, my niece might be watching this. That was a poor joke. Well, that was a, just a joke. Just that a was joke. just a joke. Okay, yeah. great. Got that. Nice. So the season finale of Minute Work is coming up next week. That's right. Yeah. I'm so happy about it. Uh, uh, we, we had such a good time doing this third season. I like to think that we are starting to kind of get in the groove. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope that, you know, the show continues. And if so, we just keep getting better and better at what we do. Well, what can we expect at the uh, with the season finale? Well, I know uh, the last two... Uh, the one that's coming up next, uh, I remember crying while we were rehearsing throughout the week because it was so funny to me. So I'm interested to see. It's a bit of a like a reveal in it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, I'll keep a, I keep that kind of secret. I'm interested to see how people react to it. I just think uh, it's sort of a really funny subject. Yeah. And it's like a guy subject, and it's it's kind of funny. Um, I forget what happens in the finale. Actually, we shot it maybe <laughs> a month ago, but because we're going to show two. On, on the last night this season, and um, I remember the, the second before last 
being especially funny to me. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. So how do you, you talked about people's reactions and you want to see how they take it. How do you gauge that? Are you a big time social media guy or what do you do? Do you watch Twitter feeds? What's up? Uh, no, mostly just kind of on the street. Folks, uh, it kind of respond to, yeah, come up and uh, make a comment or two. And I definitely like it when it's a, a positive comment, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, Like, yeah. we know that we are entertaining people, so uh, I like that. Yeah, that's got to be a nice feeling, people coming up to you, recognizing your work, recognizing you. Yeah, this is why I do it. You know, I, do, I definitely I want to uh, entertain the world. This is, I know, initially, why I even chose it. it. It was to entertain the world. And so, you know, they get that sort of feedback, lets me know, okay, I'm on the right path. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. What other things do you like to do uh, outside of entertaining the world? I like <laughs> I like uh, playing tennis. We're here at a tennis court, the Burbank Tennis Center right now. Represent. <laughs> Appreciate you all letting us be here. Yeah. I like playing tennis. I like uh, going on walks now. I like um, good meals with good friends and family. Yeah. You know, I like uh, traveling to uh, places with uh, clear, warm water, yeah. like uh, Tulum. Yeah, uh, or uh, Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Oh, have you ever been? I haven't yet. Yeah, no. I always say yet because I. Yeah, yeah. On my list. Are you Are you open to going? I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like this spot. Okay. What's, what's, well, what spot do you like to travel to? Um, I love islands as well. Yeah. Um, the Canary Islands are some of my favorites off the coast of Spain. Oh yeah, I've yet yeah. to be. Oh, that sounds Beautiful. like it could be nice. Yeah. It's kind of like crazy because it's like a desert by the beach, so you will see a camel. Oh, amazing. And then you look to your left and you see the beach, like whoa. That is something unique, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really cool. But I like clear water, too. How, how often have you been over there? Just once or twice? To the Canaries, just once. To Spain, a couple times. Yeah? Yeah. What part of Spain? I've been all throughout Spain because I, like yourself, I teach tennis. So I my last tour, I went through Barcelona and Mallorca and um, some places with names I forgot, but yeah. taking kids up and down um, to tournaments. Oh, amazing. A lot of fun, yeah. A lot I of love fun. that when, it, like, uh, your, like, your talent, your tennis talent is taking you all over the world. And I love when that happens for people. That's that's amazing. It's a credit to your hard work, and it's just, I don't know, give thanks to a, a higher power Yeah, absolutely. For that. Absolutely. Thanks so much for that. I know your, your talent takes you all over the world. I'm sure you studied in England, right? I did. I did. Yeah. Got to uh, do some plays out there. And that was a great experience. Uh, it was part of the, when I was at SC, we had an overseas study program. Mm -hmm. And so for a year, I, I took, I stopped uh, going to USC, and I, I studied for a year over there at a uh, University of Kent in uh, Canterbury, England, and I, I'm so grateful I went because it was a really sort of uh, exceptional year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What was, was that your first time abroad or had you traveled abroad before? It was, it was, it was, yeah. And what was that like being born and raised in LA? Which yeah. is, this is a city very multicultural, but just to go somewhere else where they have a different accent. And... Yeah, it was cool. I, uh, it, it, and I, Kent I, at the time was an, an international campus and so, it attracted uh, students from all over the world. You know, you know, I went to school, school with uh, kids from Africa and Japan and nice. Spain, and so it was definitely this multicultural experience. And uh, for me, it, it was just really great to see different perspectives and, and see how they sort of looked at me. Because at the time, I was the only African American male on campus, mm. and so you know, they thought. Uh, from NWA or something like that, you know, they expected me to have some rapping skills, so I tried my best to freestyle, but it was it found out pretty easy. But uh, so I just stuck to the act. That's too was bad. Over there. I know. NWA movie is casting right now. I don't know if you know. So. I can still work on it. Yeah, you work on it. it. Yeah, maybe I should. That's Straight out of Compton. Yeah. So. I'm too tall to play Easy E, though. Well, maybe. I'm too tall to play all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Take that, Q. <laughs> nah, I used to play ball with Q. Uh, Years ago, so uh, I, he was one of my. He's on my top five favorite uh, rappers. Really? Ice Cube, yeah. Okay, shout out to Ice Cube. Yeah, for real. He uh, he he brings it. He brings it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think about Kevin Hart? Who knew when Soul Plane came out that? I think he's always been funny. Yeah. It's just uh, right now he's just like so much of what he's doing is just really entertaining. He's funny to me. He's a really genuinely funny guy. Yeah. And then I so I went back to I was looking at some of his old. YouTube footage, even at 19 years of age, his stand-up then was funny. I was like, okay, so this kid has just got that thing, you know? Yeah. But so, isn't that the thing about Hollywood? Like, you never know when someone's break is going to come. They can be, you know? Right, right, right. You know, that's why, you know, I'd like to stay in the game and, you know, keep working and hopefully elevating what I'm doing and elevating the work. So, you know, I just want to stay at it. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, too, it is a numbers game. That's part of it as well. And then once you get an opportunity, 
is making the best of that opportunity. I think that's what Kevin's doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are some of the goals you have for yourself and for your career? I want to become more flexible, so I'm stretching more. Uh, I would love to be able to do the splits uh, and the dunk. <laughs> so those are still some big dreams, and the windows, <laughs> the window may be closing on that. Right. Oh, and then I'd like to uh, hop on the pro circuit, this tennis. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this, all better. this acting thing is just to give me an opportunity <laughs> for my uh, athletic endeavors, yeah. Well, let, tell me something. I'm born and raised in L.A. like you. What was it like growing up in L.A., but then to begin your career in L.A., the Hollywood aspect of L.A. to me is totally different than, you know, maybe the South Bay Area, Gardena, all that. Sometimes people come with these preconceived notions about Los Angeles, and I'm like, no, it's not really like that. So how do you feel about making that transition into the Hollywood life? See, I think you said it perfectly like that, you know, because sometimes L.A. gets this, uh, this knock against it. And just like you said, I think it's just... Uh, there's this Hollywood sort of business aspect vibe here, and then there's, you know, real life, which is like 30 minutes away, you know, or a different life, I should say. And uh, I, I like that you share that uh, sort of perspective, because I, I do with you. Uh, I don't know. To me, it's just business when I'm out here. You know, I'm, I'm, gonna, you know, I'm committed to being an honest person, sincere, and genuine human being. Uh, so, I, you know, I respect the business, and then I see it as that, and then, you know, I'm okay with going back and you know just being a, a human being you know in Gardino and Carson like you know nice. I'm okay with that how's it in Burbank how's the, the life out here they like are yeah it's nice people out here like to play tennis and, you know <laughs> you got knuckleheads everywhere though, man Burbank's got his knuckleheads you know these kids driving fast in their cars <laughs> I wonder what ethnicity they are but they you know they look like the hood element to me but <laughs> I thought, I thought I got out of there. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So what's next for you, James? I mean, we want to know uh, what projects you have coming up, man. Uh, spring cleaning. That's uh, what I'm working on right now. Uh, folding clothes and stuff <laughs> around where I live. Uh, I'm, uh, you know, I'm reading scripts now, and I'm, I'm hopeful to work on other projects. Uh, in the meantime, in between time, hopefully uh, I'm going to work will keep going. So um, I'm, I, I am interested in working on good projects yeah yeah anybody in particular that you are um, interested in working with hopefully well oh, that's a good question uh, I don't know I just saw that uh the movie uh, Dallas Buyers Club I love that so I guess that the director of that uh, uh, I'm just starting to watch this Breaking Bad which is a dope show mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. projects like that uh, seem good those are dramatic too I'd be, I'd be interested in uh, doing some dramatic stuff yeah. right now too yeah yeah. Move away from the comedy a little bit. Shift yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm okay. We would like to see you in that yeah? aspect. Yeah, right. for sure. We want to see you. Then I got to do it. <laughs> I got to give the people what they want. Yeah, exactly. Um, what's the, la the last book you read? Uh, it's a reread. Uh, it's the, the White Boy Shuffle by Paul Beatty. Do you know mm, this one? I don't. Uh, it's you might really like it because it's uh, it's uh, set in California. They the, they start in. Uh, Northern California, and then they move down to L.A. And it's like the character, the main character, he uh, is kind of from this uh, surf skateboarding town in Northern California. He's a brown skin kid now, but he's from this like you know uh, surf town. Mm -hmm. And he comes down to L.A. and his mom, you know, moves him to like a, a urban area, a rougher neighborhood. And uh, he's kind of like going through this culture shock thing, and mm -hmm. it's a it's a book that really entertains me. So I'm rereading. Nice, the White Boy Shuffle. By Paul okay, Bain, yeah. I'm gonna have to put that on my Goodreads list. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice, nice. Last year was a great year for black films. Yeah, yeah. What was happening? Black, what was happening? What, what, what is it? What's a black film? <laughs> What is um, like? 12 Years a Slave happened, uh, The Butler happened. Oh, I uh, saw The Butler. I really enjoyed The Butler. Did you? Yeah, The yeah. Butler was great. Uh, and it was uh, it was written by a cat I went to college with. Uh, yeah, Danny Strong. I know it says, uh, uh, respected Lee Butler, uh, Lee Daniels. Daniels. Lee Daniels, and, uh, you know, he directed and presented it. Uh, and uh, uh, Danny Strong wrote it, and uh, he and I were in college at the same time. So uh, I went out and checked it out, and I was really entertained by it. That um, that Forrest Whitaker was just a force in that, huh? Yeah, awesome. so great. Yeah. And how about Fruitvale Station? Did oh, you see this? Man. Did you see this movie? Yes, yes. This is crazy. Yeah. That's another USC yeah. alum. Yeah. Oh, what? The, the director. director. Yeah. Okay, then I want to yeah. work with that cat. Yeah. You know, because that movie was is just something special. Ooh, and the performances movie. are crazy. I mean, it took me like ten minutes to get out of the theater because I was like, I, I need a minute. Mm -hmm. I need a minute. Mm -hmm. And it was, and I, I saw it the same 
week the whole uh, Trayvon Martin thing mm -hmm. was happening. Me too. And it was we crazy. The West Side Pavilion. Uh, oh, is that what is that what is that where, is that where we supposed That's to be watching I it? Oh, I, I didn't know. get that memo. I didn't know. It there? Okay. I know the community <laughs> was watching it down there. I saw it. No. Um, yeah. Yeah. I just was. Um, Really blown away by Michael B. Jordan's performance and the, and the movie in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about our community and, and just I, that kind of thing, Fruitvale Station and Trayvon Martin? Do you have any thoughts on the yeah, violence? Yeah, I, I do. I think, uh, I want to think that anybody who uses any sort of weapon is a coward. I think, uh, you know, it's one thing to have a weapon in your home to protect your, your, your house and your loved ones. I get that, and I, you know, I can support that. But as soon as you take a weapon outside, I think uh, you're in the wrong, and so you're sort of responsible for what happens, you know. Um, and I just, I, 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 I do get upset by this thing. Like, I see these images like, oh, he's crazy because he shot a guy. And to me, I go, well, that's the coward. Whoever's using a weapon is telling this person, I'm afraid of handling this like, you know, human being, like mano y mano, so I need this to deal with you. And to me, that's the coward point of view. That's the coward way out. And so. I got. I do have a problem with anybody using a knife, bat, guns, whatever. Yeah. I have a problem with. It. I think it's cowardice. Yeah, yeah. Good insight. Um, you mentioned a couple of your colleagues. Well, uh, uh, I should say cronies <laughs> from USC that wrote a couple of things. Did you ever get into writing at all? No, I do journal. Do I journal some stuff. Okay. Yeah, most of the things. Yeah, like I am beautiful. I am beautiful. <laughs> You are important. You are important. <laughs> but, uh, you do all these things that lift the spirit. That's good. Affirmations and that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you sound like a spiritual guy, like meditation, prayer, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, I do pray mm -hmm. uh, at least twice a day. Uh, I could definitely uh, meditate more because sometimes I do feel like it can be beneficial. Yeah. So St. Patrick's Day is coming up. That's right. Any plans? Do you celebrate? Do you go out for a beer? I have. Yeah. I have. I'm, if, if you ask me, I, yeah, let's let's do something. I mean, what are you saying here, princess? Uh, so, yeah, what, what are we doing, I should ask? Because I well, got my uh, green jersey. Okay. And I can, uh, okay. I rock with you. Where are yeah. we doing it? I see you already got the green uh, toenails. That's what spurred the question. If you want to be, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. So, yeah, you're already set. That's so funny. Yeah, I well, love green. You know. I think the whole month folks should wear green. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, I love the color green. Okay, well, perfect. Well, we can meet up. Uh, Hermosa Beach, there's some good bars. Boom. South Bay. You see, you know. You Let's know. Do it. You know. Let's do it. Yeah. Everybody yeah. want to do all this Hollywood, Hollywood stuff. You like Hermosa. And yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah. I got good people out there partying. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, well, man, we appreciate your time. Um, don't want to take up too much of it. We know you got no, a busy this has been schedule. Really nice. Yeah, it's been yeah. great. Thanks so much for sitting down with the Sin Note. We've we featured you before, so we're well, excited to that. do it again. It. Yeah. I wish you continued success and blessings. Thank you. Good so talking nice. to you, man.